Hi there. Welcome to uh, part two uh, of my garage door project uh, component test walkthrough. Uh, in this uh, video, I'll be taking you through the source code that uh, I utilize to uh, access all of the individual components. If you haven't seen part one of the video, in that uh, uh, video I go through the actual hardware, we take a look at the schematic and some images from the uh, board build out. Anyway, let's get into uh, the component classes and uh, see how I've abstracted them away for uh, use on uh, my Intel Galileo. So let's uh, fire up uh, Visual Studio and take a look at the code. Here is the component class test harness that uh, I've written. And the primary items that we're going to be looking at in uh, this part of the video set are the items here in the components folders. Uh, the buttons, uh, the port expander, the door sensors, the ultrasonic sensor, and the, the relay. This is the class diagram that shows the, the rough relationship between the classes. Uh, you can see here on the left, I have the I2C port expander. And that port expander has, as you remember from part one, uh, the buttons, the relay, and the door sensors connected to it. And so you can see the classes that represent the individual button, the relay, and, and the door sensor have pointers back to that class. So they keep track of the instance of the port expander that they're connected to. The button array and the door sensor array basically both create the individual door sensors and the buttons. Uh, they don't need to keep track of the uh, port expander. They'll just uh, refer back to the classes that they have in their array to go and uh, get readings uh, from those uh, door sensors and buttons. The relay uh, is connected directly to the port expander, and you can see that. And the ultrasonic sensor is actually connected directly to the Galileo. So uh, there's no need for the ultrasonic sensor to have any reference back to the port expander. So that's the basic overlay uh, of the classes for the components and how they interact. The first thing that uh, I think we should look at is the I2C port expander. So let's double click on that. And here's the header file for it. Now what you can see here is I've set up uh, a bunch of uh, a num classes that enable me to put uh, uh, type safety on how I'm passing information, even though they're the same uh, zeros and ones because in the registers of the I2C port expander, that's all you're setting. I wanted the code to be explicit uh, when I uh, set up the registers that uh, I was really trying to use this register. So I wanted those uh, interfaces to be type safe. Uh, then I created a, another class that uh, basically goes through and it looks at the, it just enumerates all the different uh, register values and then a little class that helps me uh, uh, set the bit uh, if I wanted to write an entire byte. And here you can see I have a, a bunch of values uh, or variables where I keep the current state of the device. And then I have uh, three methods where I'm going to uh, write the register, I'm gonna read the register, or I'm gonna set a port bit and they're effectively helper methods on inside the class. In terms of the public uh, access to the class, I have the constructor. Uh, I also want to deal with uh, a case where I might uh, uh, create an I2C port expander with a different address. So I have a constructor that uh, sets that address and enables me to handle that. And then I have specific methods that uh, uh, set the various uh, registers inside the uh, I2C port expander. I have uh, some methods that uh, enable me to read the GPO ports and uh, read values from those registers that uh, are bidirectional. So let's go and have a look at uh, the actual implementation and we can see what goes on here. The first thing I do when I construct uh, the class is I basically reset uh, the port expander back to its boot state. So I go through and this is the uh, default values uh, occurred uh, according to the, uh, the data sheet. Then uh, I have those 
helper items that enable me to set a port bit. So when I pass in a target port, uh, it will work out what the port bit is and then set the entire uh, register byte to uh, have the appropriate value plus that port bit changed. Then I have uh, these functions here and you can go through the code. Basically, just simply uh, enable me to directly write to each of those register types, but do it in a type safe way and do it uh, knowingly that I am trying to, for example, set uh, the uh, port pull-up resistor values, you know, if I did set uh, GPPU. And this way I know the exact function that I'm calling and I don't need to uh, uh, put all across my code uh, a bunch of, of uh, magic cookies that refer back to uh, an actual register number or have a bunch of hash defines or do that type of thing. So if we go down a little bit further, uh, you can see where I do the actual write and reads. Uh, here is where I'm going to write uh, the register. And so I get the register target value. I begin a wire transmission. I write uh, the target register. I write the value that I'm uh, uh, attempting to write to or the value I want, and then I end the transmission. Um, when I do the same thing on the read aspect, I begin my transmission. I tell the I2C port expander that I want uh, this particular register and then I end the transmission. And then on the I2C bus now, the port expander uh, takes ownership and it writes uh, the bytes that I've requested to the uh, I2C bus. And then uh, I know that in the case of the MCP23008 that I'm only ever going to get one byte. So I just go looking for one byte. If it's there, I'll do a read. Uh, if it doesn't, I'll return zero. Um, what you're seeing here is uh, uh, in the return zero, uh, I need to work out for the class structure, the to-do comment here is whether or not I need to uh, uh, deal with an error uh, when I do a read. But uh, uh, we'll do, look at that or I'll at least consider that when I go and further into the implementation of the full system. So let's go back to the uh, class diagram and look at the next device. So the next two things that I wanted to look at were uh, the button and the button array. So let's take a look at a button. Uh, it's uh, a, a pretty simple class. You know, we have a button state, it's either open or closed, and the button needs to know what port it's on and it needs to have a pointer back to the port expander so that it can uh, uh, read itself and set itself up. And then the uh, read button method is the public method that you call to go and uh, get the value of the button. So let's have a, a look at uh, look at that. And here you can see, as I said, it's pretty simple. Uh, in the constructor, I store the port button, I store the port pointed to the port expander, and then I tell the port expander that for that port, uh, the direction of I.O. is going to be input. And you can see here what I talked about with the I2C port expander about wanting to be deliberate. You know, I am calling, I'm calling a function that I know sets the I.O. direction. And then I'm being type safe in the sense that I know that I'm passing it uh, the value that it expects and I'm seeing that in my code. And then I'm saying true uh, here because the uh, uh, true value on all of these items, the sort of the, the model that I took uh, for it was that I could set a bunch of stuff if I passed false and we wouldn't do a write to the uh, port expander uh, until I'm ready. And you can tell the, uh, the port expander class to write by passing true. Read is, again, very simple. It is basically going to the port expander, reading the GPO port based on the port that uh, the button knows, and then it's taking that uh, zero or one that it will get back and mapping it appropriately to the num class that represents that button state. If we come back here and look at the button array, the button array basically has a vector of buttons 
and then it uh, creates itself by work being told how many buttons it needs, an array of the ports that those buttons are connected to, and the pointer to the port uh, expander. It then uh, has a method where you can say, hey, uh, read a button, and you can pass the particular button number uh, that you want to go get. So let's have a look at that implementation. And here you can see uh, the code. It's not documented, but it is pretty simple. Uh, I pass in those items, and then I just iterate uh, through the number of buttons, and I create a, a new instance of the button class. I give it the port that it's on. I give it the port expander. And I take that button class and I stick it in the vector that I have to go and uh, store that uh, or hold those buttons that have been instantiated. On the read, basically what I'm doing is getting the button number, going to that instance of the button in the vector, and then I'm calling its read button routine and then I'm returning that. It's coming back as a button state value already, so I don't need to do any um, uh, casting there. So let's jump back to the class diagram and take a look at the garage door sensors. So let's uh, double click on the garage door sensor. And uh, this is a single sensor and you can see that uh, I tell it what port it's connected to and I give it a pointer to the port expander. I'm gonna keep track of those. And then I have a uh, simple get the sensor state uh, method that will go and tell me whether the sensor is open or closed. Uh, let's have a look at that definition. Oh, sorry. And here you can see the uh, constructor. Uh, I get the port, I get the port expander, I store that. I set that IO direction and I write it to the, uh, the I2C port expander. And then I do that same model of reading the port uh, based on the port expander and then casting it back to a door sensor state that I can return. If we look at the array, the array is uh, uh, fairly simple as well. Uh, in the case of the array, I know there will only ever be two sensors. So I set what the open port is, what the closed port is. There's no need for me to create a variable length array and then go deal with that. And then I have a instance of the port expander in the constructor. And I can go and store those. Again, I don't need an array of things. I know there's only ever two. And then I can get the door state. Now, the door state is in three of states. It can be open, it can be closed, or the door can be traveling in between the open and closed sensors. So I want to be able to return that. So let's have a look at uh, the implementation here. And you can see that uh, it's, again, very simple. I know the port, I have the port expander, I create a class of the door sensor, and I keep the handle to it. I do that for open, I do that for closed. On the, the read, when I say get me my door state, uh, I'm going to get uh, the sensor state for the open sensor, the closed sensor. If the open sensor is open and the closed sensor is closed, then I know the door is closed. If the open sensor is closed and the door sensor is open, I know that the door is open. If both of those items are either closed or open, then I'll return a door traveling. Now, I should never get both closed, but I should get both opened. Uh, and that enables me to say, okay, the door is traveling. And as I go build my uh, full implementation, I can look to say, okay, well, the door travel time should be less than 30 seconds. If it hasn't got into that state of either open or closed within that time, I know there is some problem. And then I can erase uh, alerts or deal with that state. So let's jump back to the class diagram and take a look at uh, the relay. So let's double click on the, the relay class. And here you can see the constructor is uh, uh, fairly simple. It's a number of channels because I could add a, a, a four channel or an eight channel relay to the, the project. So I did want to create this class in a variable sense. Um, I pass it the ports that it's connected to, the pin that will control its power, and then a, a pointer to the port expander. 
Uh, I'm going to have a, a vector that uh, keeps track of those relay ports and then some values, uh, some other variables that will store the relay power pin, um, the setting for relay power, and then uh, uh, the pointer to the ITC port expander. And then I have uh, some public functions that will turn the relay on, turn the relay off. Um, that's controlling power. Open the relay channel, close the relay channel. That's to set it, that's to uh, uh, drive the relay open or closed. And then uh, for my garage door, uh, I don't need to hold that relay in one or two positions. I just need to pulse it to tell the garage door opener to either open or close the door. I don't know how long the pulse is going to be. So by default, uh, I've said 250 milliseconds. So let's take a look at um, the, how I've gone in and done that. Uh, in the port expander, uh, I basically take that same model that I did for the button array, create uh, uh, some relay port classes, store those, set the I.O. direction, and then uh, turn the relay on. If you remember back to part one, when we talked about the uh, power to the relay, uh, about the 3904s that I have there to control uh, the relay on off uh, the power to the relay, I'm going to go set that, um, uh, the one that controls the power, and I'm going to tell it to energize the relay. Uh, when I turn the relays on and off, I'm just going to toggle that pin. Uh, when I want to open or close uh, the channel, I'm going to tell the port expander to write to the GPIO. I'm going to give it the relay channel, and I'm going to give it a value to tell relay open or relay closed. And when I want to uh, pulse the relay, I just open the channel, delay, close the channel. Now, uh, what I need to, to do is to uh, consider how I'm going to handle uh, whether the relay needs to be normally open or normally closed in a generic sense. Uh, I may not actually do that, but you know, if I wanted to have the one piece of code but have a relay that uh, acted the other way, I'd like to call in and actually have the methods reflect the state of the relay, as in the relay is now open, the relay is now closed, not uh, simply invert the what it really means based on whether the relay is a, a normally open or normally closed relay. That's uh, uh, pretty much all we have to do for the relay. So let's go back to the class diagram and we'll take a look at the ultrasonic sensor. So let's double click on the ultrasonic sensor and uh, you can see the, the header file here. Uh, I have uh, a bunch of variables that are to control or to hold the, the power pin, the control pin, keep track of how long the sensor has been running, am I receiving valid data. I then have uh, uh, some simple methods that are public to turn the sensor on, turn the sensor off, reset the sensor and then read the sensor. Then I have some uh, private methods that help me do uh, some things such as uh, waiting for valid sensor data, uh, the ability to tell the sensor to, to take a range reading, uh, then to go and clear the serial buffer. So let's take a look at um, the implementation of this. And the, the ultrasonic sensor class is uh, uh, a little bit of code. So we'll take a look, uh, I'll go through it at, uh, at a high level and just point out the things that uh, uh, that are important about that. So here's the sensor uh, implementation. You know, when I construct it, the first thing that I'm going to go do is store all my uh, control pin information. I'm going to set the direction that I want those pins to be, input or output, in this case output. I'm going to set up the sensor and I'm going to tell it uh, that I want it to be in single ranging mode. And now with the MB1040, you do that by taking the TX pin uh, low. And you can issue a, a range request by changing the state of that pin. Uh, then I'm going to set up the serial because I'm using serial in. And I'm going to call reset the sensor. Now, when I call reset the sensor, uh, if we go and have a look at uh, the sensor reset code. So let's go to the definition there. Basically what this is doing is turning the sensor off and then turning the sensor on. So let's have a look at turning the sensor off. I was going to jump to that, but it's on screen. Uh, here you can see that it's fairly straightforward. I'm turning the, the power pin off. 
I have a, a 10 millisecond delay to ensure that the sensor has enough time to close down. I'm gonna clear the serial buffer to make sure that there's no readings or anything left in there. And I'm gonna reset the flag that says that I'm um, receiving valid data. And that's important because uh, remember, if you, if you might remember the uh, uh, Logic Analyzer MB1040 video that I did uh, uh, earlier, I discovered that there's a bunch of copyright information that gets streamed back out on the uh, serial port. And so we have to throw all that away and make sure that we're uh, uh, ready to read uh, uh, serial data. So turning it on, all I need to do is to turn the power sensor on and then I need to wait for that valid data. So if we jump to uh, uh, that definition, here you can see the, where I wait for valid data. Basically, I'm gonna tell it to start ranging. So I need it to keep going, continually reading information so that I can um, make sure that the sensor has given me all the information that has that I'm getting a stream of real readings. And basically, I just simply do pattern matching and I wait until I get uh, a pattern that matches a sensor a reading. And that pattern was a, an R, three digits for the number of inches and a carriage return. So, I just keep looking for that. Once I have that, I know I'm getting valid data. So the sensor has been initialized, it's all proper. I can tell it to stop ranging, because remember I'm in single ranging mode by pulling this down, clear my serial buffer, and I can tell myself that I'm ready to uh, receive or do a single range because I'm receiving valid data. Now, the next thing that I wanted to show uh, is how I get a reading and you know, I'm going to call uh, the read sensor method to say, give me a reading. And this is a little bit slow, so I, I need to dr drill into why this is, because this seems to take about a second to do a valid reading, and that uh, seems excessive to me. Um, so I need to go through this. Uh, but for the purposes of uh, the component test harness, that perf didn't really matter. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell the sensor to take a reading, and that basically toggles that TX pin. And... Uh, if we have a look at the definition of that, you can see that it starts range, delays for 200 microseconds, and stops ranging. Now, 200 microseconds is the amount of time the sensor needs to take a, a complete reading, and uh, it will go get that reading and uh, uh, return that to me. Now I go through, I make sure that I get valid data from it, and then I just convert that string, which will be R0, number, number, carriage return into a distance, and I can return that information. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show here was the um, clear serial buffer. Uh, this was something that I, I couldn't find a better way to do this in uh, wiring, in the wiring API. Uh, there didn't seem to be a way to just simply say, hey, I don't care what's in the buffer, throw it away. Uh, I had to go through and basically iterate through the entire buffer reading it. Now, I could have used the Windows API, it's got the underlying port and then just dealt directly with that port. But I wanted to try and write this using that Arduino uh, wiring API and uh, make this code usable uh, for people that are uh, building stuff directly on Arduino and not on a, a Galileo running uh, Microsoft Windows. So I stuck with that. I couldn't come up with a better way. There didn't seem to be any better way uh, to go do it. There were some references of uh, going in and writing your own uh, class or adding you know, a, a flush method to the code. I didn't re want to go and do that directly um, because I didn't want to sort of make uh, assumptions that uh, uh, people would see that and then they'd wonder why the, the code didn't work. So if there is an official or better way of doing it that doesn't require modifying the underlying Arduino uh, libraries or calling the Windows API directly, I'd love to hear about it. Anyway, what I've just shown you there is all the individual classes. So the last thing that I wanted to do was just to take you through quickly through the main uh, uh, routine so you can see how uh, they're used. So let's open up the uh, uh, main file here and you can see how I utilize the, these uh, uh, classes, component classes. Basically, I have uh, a set of pointers and I'm gonna go and instantiate those. Now, you're familiar with the uh, uh, Arduino model for a sketch where there's a, a setup and then a, a main loop. And, you know, if we come down here, we can see, you know, I have my setup, 
basically I'm going to set up, connect in the graphics library, uh, connect in the user interface that we'll look at in the next part, and then I'm going to initialize the hardware. We go into the loop and we conduct uh, 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 the loop over and over again as a standard uh, Arduino sketch. So let's have a look at uh, what I need to do to initialize the hardware. I'm going to set up uh, some arrays to hold the ports for the relay, the ports for the buttons. Uh, I'm going to set the relay ports appropriately. And uh, then I'm going to go in and uh, create a new uh, ultrasonic sensor class. I'm going to turn that sensor on. We saw that code. This basically sets the sensor up, gets it to the valid reading state, single shot reading, and then pauses it. I'm going to set up the I2C connection. Now that connection is uh, ready. I'm going to create my port expander class. Then I'm going to hook up the relay to the port expander. I'm going to hook up the door sensor array to the port expander and configure it appropriately. Set up my button array. I know I have four buttons in this particular case. I'm going to create that array and it goes and configures itself. And so now I'm ready to go and utilize that uh, set of hardware during uh, the display of my user interface. In the next part, we'll take a look at uh, that user interface uh, code and you can see how I used uh, uh, all of these classes with uh, M2 uh, TKLib. Uh, it's been a long video. Thank you for uh, uh, staying in there with me and uh, uh, I hope you'll find the, the video and the source code that uh, I'm going to go and uh, publish uh, to my GitHub uh, for this uh, useful in your projects. Thanks.